So welcome again to our mock technical drawing for mechanical engineering. We are in module 1, unit 3 and remember module 1 is technical drawing for assemblies and in unity we are going to talk about representation of threads. So welcome to this unit and representation of threads is very important in our assemblies that we are going to talk about. Threaded elements are frequent in our mechanical assemblies. The hinge in unit 2 had a stud with two threaded ends. Remember, one end, the second end are threaded. The threads can be male or female. They cannot exist individually. Whenever there is one of them, the other is assumed. A typical example is the pair nut and screw that you can see in this image. The screw is the male and the nut is the female. When we draw a thread in the plane, we do not draw the helix thread. A simplified representation is in its place. Let's see different representations. These are, these are the necessary elements to understand the representation we have here the male thread and we have the crest of the thread, we have the root of the thread and we have the important nominal diameter. Now we are going to see a female thread. We are going to cut the thread to see how it is inside. We have here the drawing, we have the crest of the thread and we have the root of the thread and also we have the nominal diameter. Now, how are we we're going to represent it? The male thread. Now we have again the crest of the thread, we have the root of the thread we talked in the previous image, and you see we represent it with a thick line, the crest of the thread, with a fine line, the root of the thread, and a thin line indicates the end of the thread. The female thread, something similar is going to happen. We are going to cut again our knot and we see the crest of the thread, we see the root of the thread and this is our simplified representation. A thick line representing the crest and a fine line representing the root. So we have here our male thread and our female thread. If you are going to draw freehand, you don't need to measure the distance exactly between the fine line and the thick line. But it is important that it is clear they are different. When you are going to use a CAD program, it will do it automatically. It is important to see the width difference. In other views, we can draw it in another way. For example, in a male thread, if we have to do a section or we have to do a bottom view, you observe an interrupted circle approximately at 270 degrees. In the male thread, something similar happens. In this case, if you had to cut this part, you see here also the fine line and the thick line inside the hatched part. Now, in the female thread, if we have to draw the top view, we see, as in the male thread, a circle interrupted at approximately 270 degrees. We have here a blind threaded hole. It is a female thread. Up to now, we have explained the representation of a female thread and a male thread, each one on its own. In mechanical assemblies, both fit together. It is a threaded connection, as we can see here, with the, with the screw and the nut. But how are, going with, uh, how are we going to represent this case? We have here our male thread, our female thread, 
and the two parts must have the same nominal diameter if they are going to be threaded. So the root of the female is the same than the crest of the male and vice versa. Now we are going to start to thread. Now the two parts are threaded, but not completely. So when they are threaded, the lines of the male thread prevail. The lines of the female thread can't be seen. They are hidden by the male line by the male thread lines. In the lower part, there is only the female thread. You can see in this figure the end of the female thread. Now the two parts are threaded completely. So you can see now we can't see the female thread. It is hidden completely by the male thread. But you mustn't forget that part number two must have a female thread, an internal thread. In some mechanical sets, a thread can be the key for its functioning. There is a part that has a female thread and another part has a male thread. And this is what makes the mechanism work. Here, for example, we have an F clamp. This is a clamp. And we have a thread. This is our plane. You can see here the detail of the male thread and the other part must have a female thread. Here you see the movable jaw which has a female thread with the dimension of the nominal diameter. Now the adjustable screw has the male thread and you see the representation. We see here how the clamp works. It is the thread that makes the clamp work. Another example, a jack screw. We have here the plane for the jack screw. And here you have the detail of the two parts threaded, the male thread and the female thread. This part has the male thread and we have the other part has the female thread. This makes the jack screw work. I'm sure you all have a jack screw in your car. We have seen two assemblies frequently used, where the threaded part, male and female, are the ones that make the mechanism work and the assembly serves its purpose. This is the end of Unit 3, Module 1. Now, in this unit, what have we learned? Threaded parts are frequently used in mechanical assemblies. Threads have a symbolic representation. There is a male or external thread and a female or internal thread. And remember, male thread, fine line, thick line, female thread, the opposite, thin line and and thick line. When the male and the female are threaded, the female thread is hidden. This is the male thread in both and the female thread on the right. We don't see the female thread. So after summary, we will waiting for you in module 2.